right, and the first fight of the night here at B2 Fighting Series 151, Kansas City, Kansas. The Rowdy Rooster got his guard up, ready to go. Glendale Whitney, chill. Now look, I'm gonna tell you about Glendale Whitney. We talked about his wrestling, but he loves to throw, he loves to throw them things, man. He likes to stand up, but he can always result back to that wrestling. Here's the thing, though, also, we talked about a lot. Nice head kick by Rooster, but here comes Glendale oh. coming in. Here goes that wrestling. Big slam by Glendale Whitney and right away in the side control. The Rowdy Rooster's in trouble early. Yeah, he is. You don't want a guy like Glendale in side control, you know, the first 10 seconds of the fight. But here's the thing, like, Rooster's, you know, he's starting to get better. He, he's learning more techniques. But the thing about everybody that fights him says he's not the most technical guy, but he's awkward. He's so big. But Glendale, look, look at, see, he, he's always throwing something up. Even if it's not even the right thing, he's, he's making you think. And, and so, and, and that's a dangerous man. 100%. I mean, you look at him, 6'5", 205 pounds, 30 years of age. The Rowdy Rooster's a big man. But, I mean, Glendale Whitney looks like a tank man. coming in here, man. You know, he looks like Yoel Romero almost. Just comically strong and technical to boot as you see Glendale Whitney taking the back of the Rowdy Rooster there. Now, is Glendale Whitney going to be able to finish the Rowdy Rooster early? He is a blue belt in jiu-jitsu. We talked about his grappling. You know, Rooster is still learning jiu-jitsu. But he can't get flattened out right here. Glendale's doing the right thing, trying to flatten him out. And then he can posture up and throw punches. And, you know, most of the time you can't recover from that, especially a big guy like Glendale throwing down uh, hard punches on you. But Rooster's got – he can't stay here. He cannot be complacent. He needs to get back to his knees and at least turn in. Like Maybe even give up. Uh, the, there were hard yeah, shots. There, that's it. The ref jumps the in and stops this one. The Rowdy Rooster eight, three or four shots in a row. The ref jumps in right away to finish this one up. That's Glendale Whitney, Moose at three and one. The Rowdy Rooster still looking to get back on track. Well, well here's the thing. I, the Rooster didn't tap. I mean, it, but the thing about it is that was a good stoppage by the ref, in my opinion. I don't think that the Rooster would have been able to recover from that situation there. The ref knew that. Glendale was throwing hard blows on, on Rooster's forehead, and uh, – and that was a good stoppage. Great job by Glendale, man. I can't wait to see him face somebody up to his potential. And and we need to watch out for this, this kid right here, man. He, he's coming in. 100%. I mean, look, man, you can call the Rowdy Rooster this, that, or the other, but the fact remains, he's not an easy out. So for Glendale Whitney to come in and finish the Rowdy Rooster early like he just did, we haven't seen somebody do that to the Rowdy Rooster yet. No, not at all. I mean, even when we think, okay, this guy's, you know, got way more skills than the Rooster, the, like Tussle Connor Jr. you mentioned earlier, Hacker. Tussle has been around the block. Man, he's about to make his pro debut with us in Dayton. The thing about it is, is that he even said, Rooster, I, I couldn't finish him. I could not finish him, so the Rooster went to a decision on that. We'll see the Rooster here in the next couple of months back in the B2 Fighting Series cage. 100%. Let's wrap this one up. Here is Lance Green for the official decision. Me Too Fighting Series fans, your referee Robert Hastings has brought a stop to this fight. One minute and 28 seconds into round number one. Your winner by TKO due to strikes. Out of the red corner, Glenda Buckshot Whitney. So Glendale Buckshot Whitney makes quick work of the Rowdy Rooster here tonight, and the Rowdy Rooster skid continues as he drops to two and three. Man, I can't wait to watch that one back, Andy. See all those funny poses and just the entertainment that the Rowdy Rooster brings to you, even when he's when he's not winning a fight. He's still an entertaining guy to watch. All right, guys, we are here with the winner of the first fight, Glendale Buckshot Whitney, and you have dominated the rooster tonight quicker than anyone has ever done that. How do you feel? I feel pretty good. Uh, I went in there, worked my plan, and it came to be. What was your plan? I wanted to knock him out on the feet, but I figure if I get close, might as well take him down and see what happens there, ground and pound. Right. You're a very decor like decorated wrestler. How is that going to help you in your MMA career? <sighs> MMA, it's kicking, grappling. Wrestling is very important. A lot of the most dominant fighters are wrestlers, so yeah. might as well use it to my advantage. Do you like striking? I do. Okay. I do, but to have longevity, I might as well use my wrestling so I don't get hit as much and do as well, long as I can. Where do you feel that you're going to go in your MMA career? I have one more. I'm going to do one more amateur fight. Then I plan on going pro after that, and then we'll see where the wheels turn from there. I'm telling you, because it's going to be hard to find someone to fight you. I mean, you're, you're, you just go out there, you're 
cool, calm, collected, and you just dominate your opponents. Does that have anything to do with your training and your training partners back home? I don't believe so. I just, I like to fight deep down on the inside, so <laughs> I have to contain myself 90% of the time, but when I'm in the cage, that's at 10%, I can just let go. Yeah. How did you get the name Buckshot? Growing up, my nickname was Bucky Beaver, because <laughs> I had two buck teeth. <laughs> and didn't. Serious. And then, as, and then as I got older, I took the Y off, and I was like, just call me Buck. And then I took my first uh, amateur fight at Guns and Hoses, and uh, <laughs> Tyler was like, hey, I'm going to call you Buckshot. <laughs> Since you hit like a shotgun, I'm like, all right. I love it. That is so great and so, re well, not relatable to the guys at home because I don't think you guys are going to hit like Buckshot. <laughs> Anyways, great job tonight. Can I you? Appreciate yeah, you. absolutely. Sorry, I'm gross. No, you're not gross. You're perfect. <laughs>